Dude, what is that? You said you wanted an axe fight. Hello there, and YouTube, and welcome. I am Davros, and I am a Hoovian. So, it's all been leading to this. My top five Twelfth Doctor adventures. Now, this is all my personal opinion. None of you have to agree with it. Um, so, let's get it underway. My top five Twelfth Doctor adventures. And before we do that, let's do our honourable mentions, and they go to The Pilot, Smile, Heaven Sent, Hell Bent, and um, Mummy on the Orient Express. Okay, let's do this. So, kicking, off at, kicking us off at number five. Number five, it is a Deep Breath. Yes, the first episode of... The top of series 8 and the beginning of Peter Capaldi's run. I was longly anticipating this. It been it felt like such a long way since Christmas all the way to the autumn, but we finally got to see the 12th Doctor in action. And this is great because he doesn't spend most of his the episode like asleep or anything. In fact he's just you know, he even acknowledges that his face is familiar as well and that he's seen that face before. And also he you know, after his after confronting the uh, like the clockwork droid that's slowly becoming human, you know, he won me over with those eyes, just like that with those mighty eyebrows. Coming in at number four, we have Dark Water and Dead Death in Heaven. Now, this episode, I two part I enjoyed. One because we finally got to find out who Missy was after. She'd been appearing, reoccurring in every, yeah, that's the next one. Yeah, in uh, every series, in every, well, not every episode, but she'd been reoccurring in it, and well, we um, see, we find out that she is the master, and you know that was quite a shock for me because I think, well, they've went through with making the master a woman at least. Uh, I also enjoyed how this had a huge nod to. Uh, the invasion from 1968 with the Cybermen outside St. Paul's Cathedral and that. I also enjoyed like the finale when you know all the Cybermen like went up and protected the dead because Danny controlled the Cybermen and all that. And uh, also I enjoyed that Cyberman that the Doctor saluted to. That was a nice touch for you, know, the Brigadier. That was him. I know it was. Number three, we have the Magician's Apprentice and the Witcher's Familiar. So again, a two-part finale to a two-part premiere of Series Nine. Now, this is, this is my favourite story from Series Nine. After that, it's a bit dull, and I'm not a huge fan. But this one, I liked it. It featured the return of Davros after nearly a decade of not knowing what's going on with him, where's he been, and all that, and. Yeah, we got the Daleks in this. I also like it because Davros really had me fooled when he was dying and when he was about to die. But uh, he had the trick up his sleeve. But yeah, I thought this was a great premiere for Series 9. I just wish the rest could have been like that. And of course, for number two, we have World Enough and Time and The Doctor Falls. Series 10 finale. So, Series 10 really picked up again. I was 
not too I was disappointed by series 9 but series 10 made up for it whether it's the comedy whether it was Matt Lucas being Nardle I don't know I just liked it I actually wanted to see Peter Capaldi do another series but unfortunately he didn't but this I loved it for two reasons they brought back the Mondasian Cybermen from like the 10th planet and the master John Sim I was wondering what happened to him and why did we not see him change into Missy and all that but still he was in it and please excuse the noise if you can hear it I enjoyed it I really did um, what else did I love about this one I just love the master's look in it you know and even though he wasn't used as much it was a bit of a letdown but still he made the most of his time he had John Sim and I enjoyed that I found it a bit frustrating at the end though when the Doctor was refusing to regenerate and change but in the end of course he gave in and at our number one spot which is follows on from it is Twice Upon a Time. Now where do I begin on this one? It was a Christmas special, probably the last one ever. It had the first Doctor in it. I loved how this story tied in with the 10th planet. Just looking at it from the trailers seeing the first Doctor's hand glowing and all that. I knew it was going to have a link in with the 10th planet, especially with the return of the Mondasian Cybermen. And my god, did they do right by this. I loved it. Even though Doug Bradley, even though, not oh, Doug Bradley, that's Pinhead from Hellraiser. No, even though I knew it was David Bradley as the first Doctor and not William Hartnell, he still gave, he gave us the first Doctor back. And he created us that illusion that William Hartnell's still there in spirit. And I loved how it went from like, black and white, first Doctor to when it come, came into colour and was David Bradley. It's like he hardly changed at all. I also love Capaldi in this one. You know, gives one great final show. I also liked, you know, you know Bill and Nardle and that. And also in this one, we didn't really have a villain or a real monster or anything. We had a brief cameo from Rusty, the old Rusty from Into the Dalek. The one we'll mention, I forgot to mention there. Old Rusty. We got to see what these glass robots and that were. I also loved the captain in this, played by Mark Gatiss, who turned out to be the Brigadier's grandfather. I loved that when we found out who it was. Yeah, this to me was a moving yet good... I don't know, this Christmas special. I had such mixed feelings about it. It was emotional, it was happy, it was sad. It was just... I don't know... I, I, yeah, I would say it was perfect. The regeneration as well. I liked, I mean, yeah, it kind of, it didn't really drag on, like, towards the end. You know, he, like, gave into his regeneration and gave us one final great speech. Whether that'll age well in time, I don't know, but for now, I just remember that as Peter Capaldi giving it one last show, especially when he was telling all the stuff for the 13th Doctor to be ready for. And also, I liked how the Doctor became accepting of her new appearance and that. I really, really enjoyed that. And, you know, I am looking forward to Chris Chipnell's era. Mo Stephen Moffat started off alright, but I think towards the end, we all know that he kind of ran it into the ground a bit. But I'm looking forward to this revive, this new era now with Chipnell and Jodie Whittaker. I can't wait to see it. I've seen trailers. I'm anticipating this new series, and I cannot wait to see the 13th Doctor in action so yeah that's pretty much it for uh, this top five and you can watch all the top fives I've done on all the doctors except for 13 because we've yet to see her in action we only saw her in the last 13 seconds at uh, 30 seconds of uh, twice upon a time but yeah if you want to see any of them there'll be links at the end of this video if you like this do you agree with this list let me know down in the comments below if you like this video be sure to give it a big thumbs up share with your friends don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and to hit that notification bell all of my social media links are down below in the description so until next time live for your life <laughs>